Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadari Jaya Yashodanandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashodanandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Om
Vishnu Pada Padama Hamsa Pari Rajakacharya Ashtotara Shata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gora Premanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naran Shaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasan Tato Jaya Mudirayet Nashu Praya Shudabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 18, Text Number 14, and we'll also read from Text number 15. Shrinjan Mara Sita Swasan Okay, I'll do this one on my own. Shrinjan Mara Sita Swasan Mayu Panchalid Indriyaha Asadya Tarasadya Ityo Gadaya Nyayana Darim <clears throat> Translation, hissing indigently, indi indigently, all his senses shaken by wrath, the demon quickly sprang upon the Lord and dealt him a blow with his powerful mace. Text 15. Bhagavam stugadam vegam Vishmistam ripuno rasihi Avan shat yat tirakshino Yoga rudha ivantakam Bhagavam stugadam vegam Vishmistam ripuno rasihi risi Avan shayat Tirashino Yoga Ruda Ivatakam Bhagavam Stugadam Vegam Vismritam Ripuno Rasi Avanchayat Tirashino Yoga Ruta Ivatakam
Mataji's. Sugadavegam. Bhagavan, the Lord, to, however, Gadavegam, the blow of the mace, Vismritam, throne, Ripuna, by the enemy, Urasi, at his breast, Avanchayat, dodged, Tirashina, Aside, Yoga Aruda, an accomplished yogi, Iva, like, Antakam, death. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The Lord, however, by moving slightly aside, dodged the violent mace blow aimed at his breast by the enemy just as an accomplished yogi would elude death. Purport. The example is given herein that the perfect yogi can overcome a death blow, although it is offered by the laws of nature. It is useless for a demon to beat the transcendental body of the Lord with a powerful mace, for no one can surpass his prowess. Those who are advanced transcendentalists are freed from the laws of nature, and even a death blow cannot act on them. Superficially, it may, see, it may be seen that a yogi is attacked by a death blow, but by the grace of the Lord, he can overcome many such attacks for the service of the Lord. As the Lord exists by his own independent prowess, by the grace of the Lord, the devotees also exist for his service. We can recite the Mangala Charnam together. Om Jnana Timidandasya Jnana Jana Shalakoya Chakshurun Minitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Karamayam Dadati Svam Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamane Namaste Saraswate Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavari Pasya Chadeshatarine He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Go Besva Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanshana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namo Mahavaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gauratvise Namaha Vansha Kalpatarum Bischa Kripa Sindhura Evacha Patita nam pavane bio Vaishnave bio namo namaha 
Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vas Adi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Durga me pate minantasya sakalat paragatir mahur Svakripa yasti danena santa santa valambanam When I first was coming in contact with devotees I had a question in my mind that I'd had since the time I was about 12 years old. When I was young, my mother passed away, and I had this question in my mind, why do we have to die? This is the question that was in my mind as I was growing up after the age of 12. And as I went through high school, as I went through college, that question became more acute. I saw about five or six people when I was in high school leave their bodies while they were in high school. And then my class valedictorian in class president, she was on a road trip after graduating from high school, going to California with her friends. I think that's redundant, I just said that. And she died in a car accident. She probably was one of the most uh, encouraging, kind-hearted people you could meet. And simultaneously, she was very qualified materially. So my question was, why do we die? And when I read Srila Prabhupada's books, it gave a very um, clear answer by just stating that this is the nature of how things work in this world. Adi Bhutam Aksharam Bhavam. That this material energy, this material body, this material mind, all of these are inherently temporary, the Bhagavad Gita says. And that this temporary body is going through various changes. Dehi nosmin yata dehe komarom yovaram jada tatra deha tada praptir diras tatra namoyati. So the body, this is a verse that anyone who comes and starts practicing devotional service. It's generally the first shloka that they actually make an attempt to memorize. I know it was the first shloka I memorized. And I know many devotees who was their first shloka that they memorized. This verse is really answering the question as to why we die. That the body is going through changes, but someone who is a dira is undisturbed by such changes. So Srila Prabhupada explains, um, dira means to be undisturbed. And he answers the question in a class saying, why do we become disturbed? What causes disturbance? And he explains that dis disturbance is due to ignorance. And he gives this example that just as a ship at it, out at sea, he actually gives the example of himself when he was coming over on the Jaladuta, that a ship at sea, when a storm comes, high waters, winds, rains, this is very frightening to a human being that's riding on the ship. And this is a frightening experience because it's unnatural. It's an unnatural experience. So in the material world, we are subjected to an unnatural state of who we actually are. This is the foundational principle of Krishna consciousness. This is what attracts many living entities to come take shelter of Srila Prabhupada's movement, that this idea that this material body is an unnatural situation. Because ultimately, this question as to why we die, it's been explained by secular psychologists as uh, mortality salience. That there is a concept in psychology, there's a theory that Everything that human beings do is to organize their life or to distract themselves from death. And it's kind of a, an existential crisis that the human being has to face because 
As we know, the intelligence of a human being is more developed than an animal. An animal could be being sent to the slaughterhouse and could see you know, one goat after another being killed in front of it, but as long as it has a pile of hay to eat, it's completely unaware of the fact that it's next in line. Whereas human beings, we have awareness of our mortality, of how we are subjected to death, and this gnawing fear of death is, is constantly exposing her, itself to us at every moment. As Maharaj Yudhisthira says in the Mahabharat, that the most wonderful thing is that everyone sees that everyone else is dying, but, at, but everyone thinks that I'm the only one that won't. So this concept of death, this concept of avoiding death, it's something that can follow us even into devotional service, that we could become situated in a comfortable sphere of practicing devotional service and potentially forget why it is that we came to devotional service. That ante narayana smritihi, that everything that we are doing in the context of devotional service is for the purpose of preparing ourselves for going back home, back to Godhead. And that this fear of death, it can be overcome when we are situated in service, when we're situated in service to the Lord. So the Srimad Bhagavatam states, that this human form of life is in a very extremely rare opportunity because we are able to perceive how we are going to die. And it's an existential crisis because we have the intelligence to know that we're going to die, but simultaneously, we organize our life in such a way instinctually to try to avoid death at all moments. So it's a huge existential crisis. But this human form of life, although temporary, is a rare opportunity to give up this state of, tempor of temporal existence, to give up this state of a constantly changing material atmosphere and attain something which is eternal. Just like if you're on a hot day in Los Angeles, California, and you buy an ice cube at Venice Beach, and you're carrying that ice cube around on the beach, and you're walking around trying to sell it just like you would try to sell books. And then someone says, yeah, I'll buy your ice cube from you. How's a million dollars sound? And you're able to sell a temporary ice cube that's going to melt in probably the next five minutes for a million dollars. That's what the human form of life is offering. It's offering the opportunity to exchange this temporary material life full of defeat and misery for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge. It's a very rare opportunity. This human form of life is rare and uh, that a great benediction has been offered in this human form of life that one can achieve a very, very great wealth. Although it's temporary, a great wealth can be achieved. An artha, a great treasure can be achieved. And it's not any treasure in relationship to, to preserving this material body. Rather, the Srimad Bhagavatam says... That this human form of life, it offers one an opportunity to search for that which can't be found in the topmost levels of material pleasure and the lowest levels of material suffering. It's an opportunity to seek out our intrinsic spiritual nature. 
It's a great artha to exchange that which is temporary for that which is, temp for that which is uh, eternal. And when should this be done? Turnam yatet anapatet anumritti yavan. You should endeavor for this wealth immediately. You should act immediately to attain this wealth. You shouldn't think twice, just go for it. Turnam yatet anapatet anumritti yavan. And you should do this immediately before the body drops dead. And it would serve us well to always cultivate the mood of Maharaj Katvanga. Maharaj Katvanga was a great king who performed valiant tasks for the demigods and they were willing to offer him any benediction within the universe. And when they offered them this benediction, he, he said, well, before I accept any benediction, how much time do I have to live? He said, you got two minutes. He said, I don't want anything. Just let me engage in ante narayana smritihi. Let me engage in remembering my relationship with Krishna. And we see the example of Maharaj Parikshik as well. As soon as he was offered a curse, although he had the ability to counteract that curse, tiraskripta vipralabda, shaptaskripta hata api, nasya tat pratikurvanti, tad bhakta pravabopihi. That Shukadev Goswami, actually Maharaj uh, Shonakarishi, not Shonakarishi, what's his name? The, the father of Shringi, what was his name? Sambhika Muni. So Sambhika Muni is glorifying the devotees saying, despite the fact that they may be cursed, despite the fact that they may uh, be neglected, despite the fact that they may be insulted, despite the fact they may even be killed, the forbearance of a devotee is so strong that they will never counteract a wrong done unto them. Because they are always existing with the consciousness of that everything is being arranged by Krishna for my refining of this service attitude. That anything that's coming into my sphere of existence, anything that Krishna is sending to me, is helping me prepare for Ante Narayana Smritihi, for this remembrance of Krishna at the time of death. This human form of life is not something that we should take lightly, and we should especially not take lightly, if, lightly a human form of life in which we've been given the wonderful benediction to engage in devotional service. So there's a chance that in the course of our practicing devotional service, that we can fall victim to Niyamagraha, in which we neglect the principles of devotional service for the sake of our facilitating our material conditioning. This is described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur as the primary thing which minimizes our enthusiasm to engage in devotional service. We have to give up this lethargy, this lethargy, and this lethargy and lethargy is what I see as a type of mortality salience. This avoiding the fact that we have to die. But in the practice of devotional service, we have full awareness that of what we are, where we're trying to go, and to the degree that we can apply ourselves to that process, to that degree we are guaranteeing our remembrance of Krishna at the time of death. But if we get into practicing devotional service in just a spirit of practicing it mechanically, then dharma swanasitam pumsam vikshvak sena katasya na parayet yadiratim shrama eva hi kevalam. We might just miss the point. As Srila Prabhupada told Tribhuvanath in London, that Krishna consciousness is extremely simple, but it's so simple that you just might miss it. So in the course of our practicing devotional service, it's extremely important that we always maintain this consciousness of ante narayana smritihi. That all of my practices are simply meant to absorb me in remembering Krishna at the time of death. And that if things become shrama evahi kevalam, we may be missing the point. Just like this story that I've heard, that there was once two men 
and they were going out and they were shoveling. One of them was shoveling a hole and the other one was filling in the hole with dirt. And it was the same dirt that the person had shoveled out and they were shoveling it back in. And someone was sitting on his porch or his veranda and he was seeing this shoveling out and shoveling in. And he's scratching his head wondering, what are these guys doing? And so he decides to go up to him. He says, what's going on? He said, oh, we're planting trees. But today, the person who's supposed to plant the seed didn't show up. So in the course of our practicing devotional service, we shouldn't miss the point. We shouldn't miss the point that all of our services, all of our chanting, everything that we're doing in the course of devotional service is meant to facilitate and direct us towards this ante narayana smritihi, this remembrance of Krishna at the time of death. And the way that we can evaluate our um, how ready we are for the test, just like there's quizzes before the final exam comes to evaluate the competence of a student. We can evaluate our competence as students in the school of bhakti by evaluating how much taste have I developed for hearing the pastimes of Krishna? How much taste have I developed for studying the Srimad Bhagavatam? Shushu Sho Shadadanasya Vasudeva Katavruchi. That there should be some taste, there should be some feeling coming from our hearing and chanting of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Anugrahaya Bhaktanam Manusam Deham Ashrita Bhajati Tadrasi Krita Yat Shrut Vatat Parobhavet. Krishna has displayed these pastimes which are existing in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has displayed these pastimes existing in the Chaitanya Charitamrita for the purpose of attracting our mind to those pastimes. And Bhajati Tadrasi Krita eventually developing a desire to want to engage in those pastimes. Yat Shrut Vatat Parobhavet. This is the effect of hearing. This is the desired effect of hearing. So if a desire is developing from our hearing and chanting to want to serve Krishna in a pure spirit, that an emotion is developing which is carrying over into our respective services of chanting the holy names, of distributing books, of worshipping the deities, of cooking, of preaching in colleges, of making a garland, or is or as simple as sweeping the prasadam hall floor on a Sunday. If from our hearing and chanting, we are cultivating anu, a anushilanam, as Rupa Goswami says, shilanam, we are cultivating a feeling that the form of devotional service is there, but what is the feeling of our service? What is the feeling that we're investing into that service? Rupa Goswami says there's two divisions of cultivation. The first division of cultivation is Rupa Chaitasa. This is the form of devotion. Hearing, chanting, cooking, cleaning. This is the form of devotional service. Engaging our senses in practical activities. But simultaneously, he explains that there's the Bhava Chaitasa. That there is a feeling which should be arriving arising in our heart. And what is that feeling? Krishna bhakti bhavata mati kriyatam yati katopi labhyate tatra mulyam api mulyam ekalam janma koti sukritarana labhyate that there is some lolyam, there is some greed arising into our heart that please my Lord engage me in your service. Please my Lord make me your humble servant in every single moment. Make me an instrument for spreading the Krishna consciousness movement. Even if it's as simple as sweeping a floor, please allow my standard of service to inspire someone to want to give their life to serving you. Please make me your instrument. Rupa Goswami says that this lolium is the only thing which can capture Krishna. So this is the feeling of service which has to be arising and as we're entering into the month of Kartik, we can be meditating on this Urja Vrata. This Urja Vrata means a, something which a little bit being done, a great return can come. So simply by offering a lamp with a feeling, Krishna, can, Krishna will reciprocate more than we can possibly 
imagine. So this whole month of Kartik is meant to cultivate this mood of devotion. Nayam Sukapo Bhagavan Dehinam Gopikasutaha Gyaninam Chatmabhutanam um, Iha Bhakti Matam Iha that Mother Yashoda's standard of devotion was so attractive to the Lord that this attraction that Krishna felt for her standard devotion, it can't be had by jnana, it can't be had by any amount of mystic power, but it can only be done, this iha bhakti mitam iha, that this devotion of Mother Yashoda, this spontaneous loving devotion of Mother Yashoda, this is what captures Krishna's attention. In a little bit, an iota of that feeling offered in the month of Kartik will pay dividends as we move on in our devotional service. So this month is a great month to take advantage of this window of opportunity which has been opened by the spiritual world to attract ourselves living in the material world to develop some feeling for that realm of pure devotion in Goloka Vrindavan. And even if we can't be in Vrindavan during the month of Kartik, if while we're singing Damodar Ashtakam, we're remembering Vrindavan, Rupa Goswami says, that is Vrindavan. Tanama Rupa Chaditar Susukir Tananu Smridyor Kramena Rasanam Anasini Yoja Tistan Vrajay Tananuragi Jananu Gami Kalam Nayet Akilamit Tupadesha Saru. That if we can organize our time specifically in this month of Kartik for the purpose of absorbing ourselves in the Srimad Bhagavatam and trying to cultivate a feeling of devotion for Lord Damodar, then the Lord will reciprocate in an extraordinary way, specifically during this time. And that will be an investment in our path towards Ante Narayana Smriti. Hare Krishna. Archita Prabhu. Hi, Bhav Prabhu. Thanks for a wonderful class. We know you're off to Vrindavan today, or India in general, different places, so have a safe trip. Uh, there's one point you made that requires clarification, because especially. Uh, we're not maybe all on the topmost platform here. And that's the point of accepting whatever comes. But there, there are two things that have to be uh, considered in whatever is coming to you. And one is duty and the other one is intelligence. Mm. So the whole Bhagavad Gita was spoken initially to remind Arjuna of his duty. He wanted to have that attitude. You know, the Kauravas want to take the kingdom. I don't want to spill any blood. They're my relatives. I'll just go off and become his, you know, a mendicant. Mm -hmm. But Krishna said, no, you're a chacha. Your duty is to fight. So that has to be always remembered. What is my duty that has been assigned by my, you know, Varna and my Ashra? Mm -hmm. So it's not that, again, you're out on Sakritan and some woman comes to you as a brahmacharya and offers herself. He said, well, Krishna sent her, I'll take her. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your duty as a brahmacharya is to avoid that. And then there's intelligence. The Buddhist, the whole Buddhist path is ahimsa, to avoid any pain to other living entities. But many Buddhist monks that go out in a, some countries, they go out with their begging bowl and if people put meat in it, they eat it. So when people ask them, why do you do that? You're supposed to be a hingsa. They say, well, you know, that's what came. We went out begging. So then you ask them, so, if somebody put stool in your bowl, would you eat that? And they have to admit, no. So then you have to have discrimination. Mm. If you discriminate between stool and, you know, then you have to also discriminate veg and non-veg. Mm -hmm. So two things have to be there. Yes, a lot of things are going to come to you in your life, but you always have to have duty and intelligence, which are both given by Krishna. Thank you. Mother Shalafriya. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice class. Um, just one point. I mean, it's not a very uh, philosophical point, but I just wanted to bring it up because you said that the animals, when they're going for slaughter, that they don't know what it is. This is not true. Uh, the animals, when they're going for slaughter, mm. that they don't know what's going on. They do know what's going on. They can't speak. They can't express. And they're, you know, they have. They don't have the same kind of ongoing kind of mm -hmm. fear that lingers in their heart. But they do experience 
fear of death, they can smell death and they are terrified. There's so many examples you can see and videos you can watch showing that animals have a, a response fear and they know what's going on. So I just wanted to bring that up just because I know you're going to be uh, becoming uh, more and more speaking. You'll speak to so many people in the world and uh, points like that will just kind of distract people from the important issues that you talk about in your classes. So I just wanted to mention it. Thank, Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, thanks for <coughs> wonderful class. I just want to add one little point, and that is, uh, we as devotees, uh, how do we uh, deal with this or take this philosophy throughout the day, throughout the night? Is it simply for an hour or two hours, and that's it, and then we go on to something else? The main point is that we have to realize that misery is all around us. Misery can come at any given time. And the only way we can avoid real, true misery is to transcend it. And it can be transcended, of course, by lovingly serving the Supreme Lord. Our feeling should be that this is our all in all. And the more we serve the Lord with love, with devotion, with sweetness, with eagerness, the more the Lord reciprocates and gives us that same and even more. And when we receive from the Lord these uh, wonderful feelings of heartfelt uh, love for the Lord, then what happens is that the world appears completely different than the one that we saw, which is full of miseries, full of uncertainty, full of doubt, full of bewilderment, full of falseness. So we want this rule of of truthfulness and that can come of course if we understand and if we keep in mind that the miseries that we have had in the past we can have again but we can avoid all of those things simply and only by becoming attached to that which is not like the things we were attached to before but that which we should be attached to now which is the loving service of the Lord and we should not take it for granted we should take it with appreciation. Appreciation means I don't deserve this. I've committed so many wrongs, so many offenses, so many bad things. And yet, in spite of that, Krishna is giving me this wonderful opportunity to lovingly serve him, develop more and more love for him, and as a result, be free completely of those miseries, uncertainties, doubts, bewilderments, and the things that make life truly miserable. Thank you, Maharaj. Anything else from anyone? Well, thank you all very much. And myself, Suvarna Bindu, Bhakta Dani, and Shirachor Gopinath Prabhu, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us when we seek all the blessings of the assembled Vaishnavas to take full advantage of our time spent in Vrindavan. And we seek all of your prayers so that we can be fixed in the right consciousness when we go. So thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Ancha kalpatarum vischa kripasandu eva cha patitanam pavani vaishnavevi onamonamaha.